Hey everybody, Jack Lowe's Painting here with another tutorial. Today we're starting a full tutorial series on this bad boy right here. This is a 54 millimeter dwarf character sculpted by Raul Gracias Vittore. I hope I said that right. You can see here is Grom Brindle, who's a uh, 28 millimeter scale model. You can see the size difference. This guy has a ton of detail, and what we're focusing on today is the flesh tones. Obviously, he's not wearing a shirt, so he's got a ton of big old dwarf muscles showing, and that's what we're going to be working on today. Going to be starting off with some black primer from Steinal Res. It's made by Badger Airbrush Company if you want to pick it up. And we're just going to be priming right on top of the model here. Remember, this is resin, so whenever you're working with resin, take your time, build up your primer slowly. You don't ever want to force it because sometimes that resin is really smooth and the primer doesn't want to stick and you might end up pooling it if you try to force it too much. So just thin coats, get it on there, move on to a different spot, and then slowly build up your primer layers. So now that we got our black primer laid down, we're going to let that dry before moving on to our next step, which is going to be a pre-shade. Now, we're using Steinal Res White Primer, and what this is going to do is kind of two things. One, it's going to give us a little bit of a guideline of where we need to highlight later on, and two, it's going to create some deep shadows for our paint to go over. And as we start layering up our flesh tones, we're gonna do it very thinly. And what it's gonna do is the shadows are gonna end up being a darker shade than the big flat areas where this white paint is gonna go on. And it's just gonna help the airbrush work up, have a lot more definition. Um, you don't have to do this. This is an optional step. I kind of like doing it because even if I decide that I don't want that pre-shade to show through, it kind of gives me a little bit of muscle memory of where I need to be highlighting things. Kind of reveals where all the details are in the model because it gives the model definition. Most of the time when you're looking at resin, it's just, you know, that gray resin and you can't really see a lot of the details until you get paint on it. So what this is doing is just showing me uh, a lot more of the detail of the model. So for our first flesh tone, we're going to be using Game Color Dwarf Skin and Vallejo Model Color Mahogany Brown. And I'm going to do kind of a 50-50 mix of those in the airbrush with some flow improver. And we're going to be laying it on super thin. You can see, as I'm airbrushing here, just laying it on in really thin coats, working my way around the model. And the reason I'm doing this really thin is I want that pre-shade to kind of show through just a little bit, you know. You don't want any black paint to show through or any pure white paint to show through. Um, so when I'm laying this on this thin, that pre-shade is showing me all of the shadowed recesses of the model and it's going to help the overall look kind of come together. as we're airbrushing around you want to make sure that you're keeping everything nice and thin these flesh paints can be a little finicky sometimes um, like most lighter colored paints that you're pushing through the airbrush you don't want to try to force it to cover something on the first go around you just want to lay down a thin coat move on to another area of the model and then come back once that is a little bit set up because if you try to force those lightly colored lightly pigmented paints um, the air can actually pull that super wet paint and push it and it kind of spider webs out and creates these nasty effects on there. You definitely don't want that, especially when you're doing something like smooth skin. Alright, so now 
we're gonna go to straight dwarf skin so it's gonna be slightly lighter because it doesn't have any of that brown mixed in and we're gonna start doing our highlight so I'm trying to hit the model from a 45 degree angle or higher anything under that and it's gonna start washing out the shadowed recesses like it's gonna start covering up those darker details and we don't want that so that's why I'm maintaining a higher angle when I'm attacking this model with the airbrush. Okay, now we're gonna go to our brightest flesh tone. This is Vallejo Model Color Flat Flesh. Super bright flesh tone. And I'm going to be focusing on picking out the details of the larger muscles groups. So you can see, focusing on those pecs, on the abs, top of the shoulders, biceps, that kind of thing. Also hitting like the nose and the forehead and the ears to uh, pick out those details. This is where our flesh tones are going to be the brightest. And it's okay that it's so bright compared to our other two colors because we're going to throw a wash on this guy. And normally when you're doing an airbrush workup, you want to go a little brighter than you would normally feel comfortable doing before putting a wash on because that wash is going to darken everything down a little bit. And when you're working with these really bright paints with uh, having them this thin sometimes you will get a little bit of drying paint on the tip of your airbrush so normally what I do is just set the model down and get out a old toothbrush with some water on it very lightly scrub that dry paint off and get right back to work um, if that's something you run into like I said having an old toothbrush or some other kind of soft bristled brush is a really handy tool to make sure to keep your airbrush the tip clean All right, before we put a wash on, we're gonna do a coat of gloss varnish to the airbrush. This is made by Vallejo. I use it in a lot of my projects, especially projects where I want our wash to be super clean. And on this guy, it's gonna be a pretty important step because when we put a wash on these flesh tones, we want all those big flat slabs of muscle to stay clean, but all of our details to get washed. It's really gonna lock in the effect. So with the gloss varnish it's going to lower the surface tension of the model making that wash flow a bit easier so that when we start mixing up our wash it's going to go on really clean and to help that we're starting with the army painter quick shade wash mix medium a little bit of blue tone a little bit of red tone and some agrax earth shade and this is a really old technique of doing skin washes and we're going to basically mix kind of a purpley brown wash, a little bit of violet in there to really get that skin effect going. Uh, some people prefer just normal flesh washes. You can go with brown, you can go with some sepia tones depending on the shade of your skin. But what we're doing here is mixing up kind of a violet wash with a little bit of brown in it. And to get that going, I'm going to mix the blue and the red to make purple until I get that violet color that I want. And then I'm going to put in enough brown to darken it down a little bit more and get that brown element into that wash. But it's still going to be a little purple. Uh, when you're seeing the wash tin on video right now, it looks just like, you know, brown, brackish color. But if you actually dip your brush in there and then put it on the model, there is that violet tint to it. It's got a little bit of that violet tint to it. And with this Army Painter wash system, you can just slather it all over the model and it's going to flow super easily. It's going to be really clean but you want to constantly keep that brush moving and wick away any part of that wash that gets on the flat model and starts to stain so you got to be kind of quick when it's super wet and what i'm doing here is after i slather on the wash i'm dipping my brush in water and then rubbing that around to help it flow a little bit more and not dry so much on our flat surfaces and if it's pooling any any anywhere with like just a lake of of wash you can see kind of in his hands and like on the bottoms of his boots and stuff where it's just like these huge bubbles of wash just wick that away with the tip of your brush and and then uh and hit it again and with this guy i wanted it to be really 
not so much perfect, but I wanted it to do what I always wanted it to do. So I had to wash it off a little bit with some water, put it more back on, lick it away, use a little bit more water and put it back on just to get that wash to sit where I wanted it to sit. Sometimes you get to do that. Yeah, so he's looking pretty good. Got that washer I want to. Pretty clean. Um, when we come back to do a matte coat here in a minute, uh, you see that it's a pretty clean wash. Like, it's a little dirty on some of the flats, but it's not the end of the world. Like, we have another step that we're going to do after the matte coat to make sure that everything is going to be looking its best. And here we're going to use our Vallejo matte varnish out of the airbrush. And what this is going to do is matte back down our colors, unify the finish, because with that gloss varnish and the wash on top of it, you have some places where you can paint on and some places that are still super shiny. So the matte coat just covers that all up and uniforms the finish on all those paints and lets us keep painting back on top of it. All right, last step is really important. We're gonna go back to our flat flesh and we're gonna thin it out even more than we did before. Basically spraying a tent over this model, like a filter or a tent or a glaze, whatever you wanna call it. And we're just gonna be focusing on those large muscle groups again and cleaning them up from the wash, getting rid of any kind of staining that might be there. And it's also gonna soften up our skin tone so it's not super stark between the ultra dark wash and the ultra bright flesh tones just softening it out and getting that really nice flesh tone workup going and it's not totally done i mean this is kind of halfway done we still have a little bit of glazing to do to pick out those details and the final steps of the models but as a regular flesh tone workup this is the great way to start hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you want to catch the next part of the tutorial series, make sure to catch me live on Twitch. We're going to be alternating back and forth between Twitch and YouTube, and you can find the Twitch URL in the description below. I'll catch you next time.